Why did the experiments fail in the first data transmission for computer programs via the CMT interface audio, FSK modulation, 1200 BPS? The experiments in March 1983. The early Z80, 8-bit computers had functions to store and or load their computer programs, written in basic language into cassette tapes via so-called CMT interface. The programs to be saved into cassette tapes were modulated as audio FSK 1200 bits per second and were sent from the computer to the cassette tape recorder via audio line input, line output terminal as audio signals. 1200 BPS, audio FSK signal. The programs to be run were loaded from the cassette tape recorder to the computer's memory as audio FSK, 1200 bits per second modulated tones via line output terminal as audio FSK, 1200 BPS. In this generation, PCs for basic interpreters had no communication methods such as modems connected to telephone lines and there was no concept of the internet for worldwide digital communication. There were used analog signals, voice, music, video modulation by AM, FM, CW, radio teletype, or fax modulation transmitters and receivers but there was no communication equipment to send or receive programs or digital data. I thought, if I could transfer my original programs or digital data using a radio wave to a long distant place, I could realize a very good digital data transceiver. It was my first dream when I bought my first small microcomputer. My first attempt of program transmission for radio waves. I connected the CMT interface cable to send the program of my 8-bit computer to the microphone connector of the FM transmitter directly, inputting the low-frequency audio signal, audio, FSK, 1200. BPS, by save operation, of the basic interpreter, and then FM transmitter sent the modulated radio wave to the FM radio where the microcomputer was connected via CMT interface. Since the signal of the audio FSK on CMT interface is located in the audio frequency range, I expected the program would be received by the FM radio and the decoding received signals on the computer would be successful. However, it didn't work at all. When the modulated radio wave is sent, the microcomputer receives it, but the load function operation on the computer fails to decode the program. To solve this problem, after recording the 1200 BPS audio, FSK signal sound is an audio signal once on a cassette tape, play the recorded tape, input it to the FM transmitter and send it. Then I sent the received program to another FM radio cassette recorder, and once recorded it by analog transmission method on a cassette tape without use of the computer. Set the recording tape of the analog reception sound in the radio cassette. Execute the tape playback of the radio cassette with the load command, and input the recorded audio and FSK signal sound from the CMT interface to the Z80 microcomputer. Then, the ASCII code format program was normally loaded into the memory of the microcomputer, and the program was executed normally. I used the FMVHF very weak signal that is allowed to be used freely in the law. In this experiment, from the result that audio and FSK data transfer by analog recorded tape is successful without going through the hardware operation of the microcomputer. The audio and FSK signals are directly input to the FM transmitter without usage of the CMT interface of the microcomputer. In this method, I noticed that normal program loading would not be possible due to the interference of digital noise from the microcomputer. Besides, there was a problem with this program transmission method as a protocol. 
there was a very small probability that the received data would be changed to be different data. But in the non-procedural asynchronous audio, FSK, automatic data correction could not be performed because there was no error correction retransmission protocol. From the above experimental results, the cause of the failure of the program transmission experiment using radio waves at that time was caused by the following problems. Probable cause. 1. Digital noise via the ground line was invaded into the FM transmitter, and extra digital noise was mixed and distorted the FM transmission radio wave. At that time, it was believed that the grand line was always fixed on exactly zero volt and the noise voltage went through the signal line only. But the RF wave rides both on the signal lines and the grand line actually. This digital noise can be removed by using 1K ohm versus 1K ohm copper wire transformer that can cut the grand loop of the digital noise between the PC and the transmitter. Two. The FM transmitter did not have a filter to reduce the audio signal outside the band of audio, FSK, 1200 BPS. There may have been inaudible high frequencies or very low audio frequency noise. Some band pass filters or low pass filters at the audio input line may be effective to reduce such noise. As for the filter of the DC power lines on the PC, the electrolytic capacitor, 500 microfarad in the lower range is much more effective than the three-terminal EMI filter on the PC's DC power supply, BDD, 5 volts. It could bypass the digital noise very well. There was strong digital noise on the BDD 5 volts of the computer but it was not well known yet. Four. The noise suppression core product that can be attached to the CMT interface cable did not exist as products at that time. These EMI core parts were not sold yet. Cheap core products sold in Akihabara are not always affected but core products for mass production from the good parts vendors can be effective to reduce noise. 5. There may have been unmeasurable noise in the higher, VHF, UHF band of the oscilloscope's measurement range frequency, up to 60 MHz. At the time of the experiment, it was quite expensive and I couldn't buy an oscilloscope, so 60 MHz was the upper limit frequency even though I borrowed it for student experiments. At the time of unexpected abnormal oscillation of TTLIC 74 LS 74, it can be observed on the screen to some extent with VHF TV 108 MHz or higher. It was not always able to capture the noise. Current oscilloscopes have enough performance and are sold at an acceptable price. 6. There was no equipment such as a spectrum analyzer that could measure the presence of noise produced by the microcomputer device. Although it is not a measuring instrument, we were able to confirm noise reception on wideband radio or VHF, UHF TV receivers. Spectol analyzers to measure EMI may be expensive even now. 7. Early microcomputer products do not have parts such as multi-layered surface mount boards and chip ceramics condensers with excellent high frequency characteristics. There was no design concept to pass the unnecessary radiation regulation, and there may have been no recognition of the need to suppress reception interference in the short wave, VHF, and UHF band. Priority of selling computer products was important, ignoring noise reduction design. It made the product price be expensive. VCCI Class 1 and Class 2 were determined by the computer production vendors might not be enough for actual usage after the EMI limitation standard is EU or US. Current domestic PCs have been improved to reduce such EMI noise. When the 7 MHz band was used, there was so strong noise radiation that the communication device could not be used. And when a microcomputer worked, communication became impossible due to noise from the computer. Fortunately, communication was possible at 14 MHz. Microcomputers used Z80 CPU clock only on 4 MHz. 
In nowadays CPU clock frequency becomes 1 GHz, 2 GHz, or such SHF range but they work without no such terrible noise. Experiment. March 1983. A few years later. A modem that implemented the protocol named AX.25 in TNC, which has a packet retransmission protocol for HDLC procedures, was developed overseas. An automatic correction by retransmission was implemented in the protocol AX.25. Program transmission with a modulation rate of 1200 BPS on radio frequency has become practical by replacing it with AX.25 protocol communication via TNC and terminal node controller. It became a big hit all over our country and was used mainly on UHF 438 MHz or VHF 145 MHz. The digital packet mode of PSK 1200 BPS was used on the satellite Fuji Oscar 20, JAS-1. The Japanese first rocket named H-1 launched our satellite with a big and heavy mirror ball. Thank you very much for listening to my failed experiments.